Times I have to shout tea time at the top of my voice before you come. Didn't hear a thing. Honestly, you're like a little child with his toys with you, antique sometimes. Oh, I never get anything as beautiful as this in my Christmas stocking. 18th century, Hallmark, probably made in Birmingham. Lovely. Now, maybe please start our Who's thinking I ought to charge for it? 80, 100? Peter, Very tea. valuable. Yes, sir. Well, leave some for Tom, darling. Where is he, anyway? Mr. Robotham wants to see him after school. What about? Hasn't been misbehaving in class, has he? I'd expect Julie to tell you if he had. Oh, in here, Tom! Okay. And... You get it all right? What, Dad? The polish, the beeswax. You haven't forgotten, have you? Oh, really? I'll get it, Dad. Don't worry, Dad. Leave it to me, Dad. Shops will be closed by now. H how am I going to get that table ready for delivery tomorrow? Sorry, Sorry, it depends what you mean by a promise, doesn't it? Oh, man. Had a good day at school, Tom. Okay, Mum. What did Mr. Rowbottom want? Big mouth. Come on. I'll tell you later. All right, I'm going. Well, who cares what old Rogan has to say anyway? Chilly. Well, the teachers call him now. Why shouldn't we? Well? Um... Is something wrong? Of course not, no. Well, then tell us what happened at school this afternoon. Mr. Robottom said I've not been working hard enough. I don't know. Well, he sent me a whole big essay to do before Monday. Which you shall do. And since it needs peace and quiet to concentrate on something like an essay, you can make a start tomorrow afternoon when the rest of us are driving to the country to deliver the table to Colonel Watson. Oh, Dad. And maybe that'll teach you to work harder and not forget your promises. Cheer up. Think how quiet it'll be without Jilly around. Wally, come on. Do you know what I think? What's your last scarf on a day like this? You see my keys anywhere? You've got them. Come on. They must be in the car. It's right now. Oh, 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 It's you, nobody. Oh, come on, nobody. I know you're here somewhere. Hey! Pig. Good, yeah? Oh, very funny. What are you doing here, anyway? What do you mean, what are you doing here, anyway? It's my house, mate. I meant here now, this afternoon. What else to do? I saw you sitting over there, so I thought I'd have a bit of fun. What are you doing? I thought I'd be out with the others. Nosy. Fast asleep I was. The way you went out of that front door, you know, it's enough to waken the dead. I've got an essay to do before Monday. Boring history, that's what. Why is history so boring, nobody? Oh, I don't know. Nobody ever taught me any. Not less than three pages, Sinclair, on any aspect of the Industrial Revolution. I mean, how do I know what life was like 140 years ago? You tell me. We'll do it together. What are you 
talking about now? Exactly as it happened. What it was like then, before you went and died. Just the workhouse, that's all. Oh, what was it like? Listen, can I go upstairs and play with your model railway? No, we can't. Dad'll kill me if he comes back and find I haven't done any work. I'll call nobody. You've got to help me, please. Just lived there, about 40 of us. The History of Cornerstones by Tom Sinclair. The house where I lived was once a workhouse. You haven't told me what it was like yet. They just sent us here, didn't they? Well, did you like it? You're a bit funny head you sometimes, aren't you? Well, it's a nice house, isn't it? Wasn't this house stupid, not this one. Wait a minute, Dad's got an old photograph in the shop. The one that I found. Come on. Aye, that what house they built after that fire. Was there a fire? Oh, aye, a big one. Lit up town for most at night. And all there were them daft little engines pulled by stupid little ponies. No pumps or hoses like today, just buckets. Did lots of people die? I don't know. How long did myself be then? How did you die, nobody? Plague. Starvation, like most of us kids. Hey, can you keep a secret? Yeah. I'll show you then, it's in the cellar. As long as your dad had washed it out and his decorations. Look, yours. just tell me, that's all. Right then. A mark is what you do when you can't write. Sort of a trademark, right? And whenever you see that mark, they know that you've done it. And that one's mine. Were you still alive when you did that? I was, just. See, this is what they called the infirmary. They put you down here when you were sick, so you wouldn't be seen up above by the Board of Governors when they came round on their visits. Oh, no. Mustn't do anything to upset the fine ladies and gentlemen of the town with all their... Mm, wonderful generosity to the poor and needy in the local workhouse, must we? You make it sound so horrible. Well, it was. Run by cruel people. Did you die down here? By that mark. See, listen, I'd been running around the town looking for a man who took his cart over to the docks twice a week, ten miles away. A big new steamer had just got back from the Far East. The Orient, they called it, but lots of Chinese on board. And there were fever on that ship, and I caught it from them. All skin and bone. Never had a, a decent meal in my life. So when I get sick, they puts me down here and leaves me for dead on a pile of straw with a jug of water each morning if I were lucky. Is that what it was really like? Oh, aye. So then I died. But up before making that mark, just to show me mates I hadn't forgotten them. And Jack Dreadful showed me how to make that mark. Who's Jack Dreadful? Oh, he's a right villain. But a nice one. He was boss of our gang. What gang? Oh, it was all of us young uns. We did save him for him. You mean you stole things? How else do you think we kept alive in this hole? Nobody gave us a way to buy food, you know. Mm. Hey, would like to meet him? Well, he's not still alive, is he? No, he's a ghost stupid like me. Oh. Well, he won't eat you. In fact, if you're writing about him, he'll be really nice to you. I always wanted someone to write about what a nice person he was. Where does he own? <laughs> Last day, you at the police station. I'll go fetch him for you. I'm sure you'll like him. Well... Shut up, Belong. Come on, he's here. I've got him for you. Hurry up, he's coming. <sighs> ah, delighted to meet such a fine gentleman, I'm sure. Allow me to introduce myself. Jack. Dreadful. Friend to them who has no friends, and, uh, <laughs> a burglar extraordinary. <laughs> uh, my, my young whippersnapper friend here tells me that you, you wish us to write about me in a book, young sir. Oh, 
an, an exercise um, book. Oh, the size of the book don't matter to me one jot, young sir, as long as it is a book. Anything to set their miserable parish records straight since our apprehension by the constables. You, you mean you were arrested? Oh, most undignified it was, young sir. Especially them nasty, ungracious rebukes as delivered by the local magistrate. Oh. Hey. Uh, yes, Jack. Oh, I'll write about your right, Mr. Treville. In fact, nobody's been telling me about some of your adventures already. In that case, young sir, you shall have this back again. <laughs> I should have been a concert pianist, but my fingers found other melodies more attractive. <laughs> The old place has changed. Brings back memories, eh, lad? Yes, Jack. Yeah. Uh, you may have the privilege, young sir, of showing me around. Interesting. Very nice, young man. Even though I have no heart in me to beat, young man, I must admit to a little quickening of the pulses. He must be in the trade, is he not? Um, antiques, yes. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 I mean a man in my own profession, a, a man after my own calling. He doesn't thieve, Jack. Yeah, disappointing. I was, uh, I was just hoping to meet him, perhaps down at the station one evening as I, as I trudged the passageways, putting the fear of trembling into those young town constables. Ah! Uh, mm. <laughs> and um, down here's the cellar. I don't trust him an inch. That's why he's the best in the business. Ah, ah, the old infirmary. Scene of some of our greatest triumphs, hey, lad? Yes, Jack. True. So this is where you put the sick people. Oh, no, 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 no. Before those unhappy days, young sir, when us poor pitiful creatures occupying the workhouse were still fit enough and strong enough to, to, to go out and do an honest day's work. Oh, hardly honest, Mr. Trevor, if the work you did was thieving. Ah, no, no, no. It was the way that we did it that commanded the respect of the townsfolk, young sir. Even though they'd never admit it, them folk, the young constables. Wasn't a victim in town that didn't admit that Jack Treadfield's den of thieves was the hardest working in all of England. <laughs> Picture then the scene. This cellar here was the very heart of our business. No electric light down here then. Uh, just the flicker of a candle and the dancing of black shadows as me and the boys meet and I. Gives the me instructions for each day's thieving, and then and takes in their spoils in the evening. What sort of things did they steal, Mr. Treffle? Oh, things of such variety, sir, as you can't imagine. And every item a treasure. Ain't that the truth, lad? Yes, Jack. Yes, yeah, the money we did share. As for the watches and the jewels, I hid them, put away for a rainy day. I didn't see none of that. Silence! I won't take no impertinence from a mere apprentice lad like you! No, Jack. <laughs> there you are, sir. <laughs> Just a few of my reminiscences worthy of publication. I'm very grateful, Mr. Treffle. So you should be, boy. So you should be. Yes, I must be going. 
Police Constable Jurtson finishes his shift soon, and I get great pleasure in upsetting his tea as he settles down for a cup back at the station. <laughs> and therefore, my good sir, I must bid you farewell. <laughs> <laughs> A word with you upstairs before I leave? Yes, Jack. See you later. See me, Jack? Yes, lad. A question of my fee. What fee, Jack? Now, you don't suppose that I comes all this way and tells all those tales to the young sir for nothing, do you? No. I need a rewarding, lad. But what with Jack? That. I'll be stealing, Jack. Then steal it and give it me. Why does a master have to stoop to stealing his own treasures in this modern day? I said steal it, lad. Oh, how'd it go? Oh, fine. Tell me that. Oh, um, well, nobody uh, came, right? Finish it all right? Oh, yes, I did ten pages. Well, Very yourself. good. Well Tom, done. Have you moved that silver snuff box? Um, no, Dad. Oh, no. Oh, what's wrong? It's gone. It's probably hidden under some of the mess. It's gone, there. darling. Has anyone been here, Tom? Uh, nobody, Mum. Was that the very valuable snuff box, Daddy, the one you got yesterday? No, no, nobody's been here. You didn't hear anything. Nobody, Dad. Oh, let me see if I can find the wretched thing. Shall I help, Mum? No, you two get yourself some supper, then off to bed. Okay. Are you sure nobody's been to the house or, or the shop? Nobody, Dad. We have to find it. You do realise that. What's that Why put it on here? Upstairs. Look, Diane, I put it on here. That's okay. Well, that's it then, isn't it? The end of a beautiful friendship. What are you talking about? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? There's nobody. Well, Jack Treffle could have done it. What use is an antique silver snuff box to a ghost? That's what I don't understand. Well, nobody's a ghost too, isn't he? This is nobody. Well, nobody does make footsteps stupid. Find it, Mum. Your father said if it hasn't turned up by the morning, he's calling the police. Come on, eat up. It wasn't your fault. Good night, darlings. Good night, Mum. And where is nobody? Nobody, where have you been? Jilly is in here. Well, come on. What have you done with this snuff box? He made me take it. Payment, he said, for all those things he told you. Made you steal it? What do you mean? Can't you stand up for yourself anymore? It'd have killed me if I hadn't done. Could he have killed you, stupid? You're already dead. Oh, shut up, Jilly. Nobody, did you know where he's taking it? No, I'd get it back if I did, wouldn't I? Nobody, if a ghost takes something that's real, can he make that invisible too? Oh, what's real is real. Mm. So he would have hardly have taken it back to the police station, would he? It's got to be in the cellar.
It's only because you know what used to happen down here. Nobody, when you were working for Mr. Treffle, which was his corner? What do you mean, his corner? Oh, you remember nobody. He was telling us this afternoon. Um, picture then the scene. This cellar was the very heart of our business. No electric light, just a flicker of candles and the dancing of black shadows as me and the boys. Meet! And I gives them the instructions for each day's thieving. And then takes in their spoils in the evening. Hello, everybody! Oh. Very clever of you, young sir, to guess my little secret. What did you tell him? Just a snuff box, Jack. We don't want any of the other stuff. Seeing as it's your house, turns you back to the wall, though, all of you. Come on! And no peeping. You, especially. What is it? What's going on? It's Jack's secret hiding place. For all the watches and jewels we stole. It was bound to be in the cellar somewhere. That's where he hid the snuff box. Hey! You can look. Uh, tell your father I meant no harm, sir. But it, it's it's just it's such a lovely piece, you see. Something to, to feast my eyes on once in a lonely while. Uh. What do you do with the rest of the stuff? Well, I'll put him back, of course. All right, but on one condition. If anything else goes missing from upstairs, I'll give it to Tom's dad to sell in the shop. Where's your gratitude, boy? I mean it, I'm telling you. I'll give it till morning to get out, or I'll take it for myself. <laughs> Listen to him, Mr. Treadful. Nobody's a terror. People don't do as he says in his house. Come on, Jilly, bedtime. I just don't understand it. When I got down this morning, there was the snuff box almost exactly where I left it. Sounds to me almost as if Jack Treadful's been paying us a return visit. <laughs> How do you know about Jack Treffle, Mum? I've been reading your story, darling. It's not a story, it's real. No, oh, it's very Shh. real in your essay, Tom. It's very good. Oh, it is. I've uh, got one criticism, though. What's that? The handwriting's terrible. Mm. <laughs> well, nobody's perfect. Oh.